in a sloth use eToro to trade Bitcoin, Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies. While Eric gets the latest crypto news and trends on his feed, Sloth is feeding on an apple. Eric does research on crypto trading opportunities. And Sloth is still doing this. When Eric follows and connects with other crypto traders on eToro, Sloth is following his apple. So why are they both such great traders? Because Sloth accidentally used eToro's copy trader to automatically copy all of Eric's trades. So, whenever Eric makes a trade, so does Sloth. Trade like an Eric, or copy like a Sloth, on eToro. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, very happy to have all of you join us here on the CoinGecko's 13th virtual meetup. My name is Bobby Yong. I'm the co-founder and COO at CoinGecko. And for today, we have three very distinguished guests. Uh, joining us today, we, we will be talking about uh, the Polygon ecosystem, exploring the Polygon ecosystem. And let me introduce the guests over here. We have... Uh, Arjun Kause, VP of Growth at Polygon. We have Mark Zeller, Integration Lead at Aave. And we have Samit Singhania, Founding Member at Quicksop. So, hey yeah, very happy. So, um, guys, if you're hearing this on Crowdcast or anywhere else, uh, would love to hear uh, where are you from. So, kind of type on Crowdcast in the chat box where you're listening in from, where you're from Malaysia, like where am I, or in India, or in, uh, in England, or in Ukraine, or in US. Uh, we love to hear from all of you guys. So Arjun, Mark, Samip, very happy to have all of you on, on the show. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thanks. It's going to be a good one. Yeah, thanks for, yeah, thanks thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks, Bobby. Thanks for hosting us today. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think it's very timely that we have this virtual meetup talking about Polygon. Uh, I think if you look on CoinGecko, I think one of the trending coins on CoinGecko right now is Polygon. Everyone in crypto is looking on, at Polygon and, and it's like the, the hottest DeFi farms are all on Polygon these days. So interesting things to talk about. Um, if you have questions, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're listening in, feel free to ask your questions. I will pick a few questions from the list and, and kind of ask our distinguished guest today. So without wasting more time, guys, let's, let's start with the questions, right? So my first question I have is prepared for Arjun. So we start to see many projects starting to expand and build on Polygon. And some of the great examples that we have here would be Aave and Quickswap, which is built on Polygon. Um, in your opinion, right, how has the traction been for Polygon against other chains like XDAI, BSC, Phantom, Solana? Uh, would you like to hear from, from your thoughts, actually? Oh, sure, definitely. So I, th I think uh, uh, it's been a very interesting time uh, for scaling solutions in general, right? So uh, I think right from December, November, December, you know, when this uh, when the gas fee started go going really high on the on Ethereum, you know, everybody started you know sort of talking and discovering uh, different scalability solutions. I think what worked in our favor were a few things. That number one is that is is how we sort of I think the core values which we have, which is very similar to what Ethereum also uh, believes in. We always see ourselves as a natural extension of Ethereum. We always believe that Ethereum is the best ecosystem out there. Uh, so that, that's one of the reasons why, you know, we are not just EVM compatible, but we also use the same ERC style assets, you know, so it's easy for developers and for users. So I think, so, so I think this was one of the reasons why, you know, we got so popular uh, because the experience was the same as Ethereum, not just for the developer, but for the user as well. Um, also, uh, I think one very understated quality of, of Polygon, you know, when, when you generally talk about scaling solutions is that, that transactions on Polygon are extremely uh, fast and also very inexpensive. Like the average transaction fee is something like uh, $0.00004. Like it's practically free. And, and what that means is that the average user, like let, let's talk about people who've never used blockchain before, right? Remember the first time you guys attracted with, with blockchain. 
you, you have no idea right and and you, you first time using bitcoin right 10 minutes first time using block. bitcoin like no idea where to click what to do and you know and and then there's so much money right and bored like remember in ethereum like oh my god 30 bucks like you know to approve this contract but but uh, you know with a, with a network like like polygon you can enter that with like usually 3 or 4 dollars you know browse the entire blockchain ecosystem gain that confidence and understand how it works understand even simple things like like I remember like you have to approve the contract then you stake right there are two transactions there right and simple things like you know sometimes when you trans when you doing a transaction a transaction can get dropped like that happens like like I remember on ethereum and uniswap I, I did a transaction and for like I think it was 50 55 dollars and it dropped and and I hated everybody for that like you know because 55 bucks gone but but this is kind of how it is and i think this understated value that a non blockchain user can come and enter the polygon ecosystem gain that confidence and become a believer in blockchain technology i think is is the biggest power of polygon and and i you know when i was talking mm-hmm. to you know we've talked to the rv team about this as well with mark that that once rv went live i think within about a month or 45 days we had contributed almost i think what 20000 plus new users uh, mm-hmm. to the Aave protocol, you know, people who are first time, you know, blockchain users, but actually started their journey with Polygon because it was so easy and, and, and cheap as well, you know, and safe. So, so I think that's, that's one of the reasons why we've been so popular and it's, it's been an exciting time for us. Cool. Cool. Interesting insights. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, I think, I think next question I have is for Mark and Samib. Um, you guys chose a uh, quick swap and Aave to build on top of Polygon instead. Uh, I'm just curious to hear, right? I mean, when you guys, I mean, obviously you guys did your research before choosing Polygon and this probably came in six months ago or so on the chain that you, that you would like to go. Why do you guys choose Polygon instead of uh, BSC or Phantom or, or, or some other, other, other layer one or layer two chains or side chains if you may to, 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 to expand? I mean, do you guys consider other L2 solutions, other chains or, or they was like, no, we're just going to go for Polygon. It would be interesting to hear from your thought perspective on, on how you guys arrive on Polygon. Yeah, of course. Why not? So I'll start. Okay. Uh, so I would say, you know, my journey into Polygon has not started with Kutsua. Right? So I have been with Polygon, you know, since the very beginning, even before the launch of their mainnet. Right. So we have developed quite a few applications on Polygon before as well. So I had a quite a good, ex- quite a good experience you know, developing applications on Polygon. And the best thing that I like about Polygon and like why we personally, like I personally chose Polygon for QuickSwap and then discussed with other people and they were like, yeah, you should choose Polygon. And the best thing about Polygon is their developer support, their community support and the support from their team, right? So suppose, if, okay, so layer two is still new. And when we started, it was still new for the users, for the developers, like for everyone, right? So we needed a great support from the team. Otherwise it wasn't possible for us to develop I mean, forget about launching the quick swap. It wasn't possible for us to develop anything on the platform if we do not get a proper support from the team, right? It was that team, right? It was new for everyone, not for, not just for us, for everyone out there, right? And the support that we get from the Polygon team, that was phenomenal, that was wonderful, I would say, right? So that was one of the major reasons why we chose Polygon over other projects, right? Other, like VSC, XTI, or like Solana, and all that stuff. Now, uh, there, are, there were other reasons as well, right? Uh, we also believe in in community building stuff, right? And projects like BSC, they call themselves ETH killers. And uh, and we, we we are not ETH killers basically, right? So we love Ethereum, we love Aave, we love Uniswap, and we wanted to build an extension to it. So the purpose of building Polygon or purpose of building QuickSwap was not to kill anybody, right? So we built QuickSwap not to kill Uniswap, but to just give users another option where they can trade freely without worrying about the transaction cost, without worrying about the transaction time, anything right so we wanted to improve that particular ux problem right which was there on uniswap because of the increasing gas prices increasing ethereum prices i still remember i i if i'm not wrong you know in march last year the ethereum prices was at 90 us dollars and then we have seen ethereum rose up to 4500 us dollars gas price up to 2500 so at that time doing one single transaction on uniswap was somewhere around 300 us dollars so that was something which we wanted to solve. And I think there is no other platform better than Polygon to solve that particular problem. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that's why we chose Polygon on top of others. Cool. Let's, let's hear from Avi, from, from, from Mark. Why do you guys choose yeah. Polygon? Well, the first thing that is really important to say is that uh, we, and I, when I say we, it's not only IV because I think everyone on this panel share the same idea is that we are building DeFi for everyone, 
we are not just building another tool of finance for the rich. And basically what happened uh, during the summer of 2020 is that Ethereum that we love, we, uh, we were born and raised on the Ethereum network, uh, was victim of its own success. Uh, because on a public blockchain, the block size is limited. If there's many people that want to use uh, the Ethereum network, it's going to be crazy expensive to use the Ethereum network. And that's basically what happened. And we went uh, since the, the summer of 2020 to the situation where if you have less than five figure portfolio, Ethereum and DeFi is not for you. And that was not acceptable because that's basically finance for the rich. And I don't want to do that because finance for the rich is already traditional finance. And when I start my crypto journey, I didn't have a five-figure portfolio. I started it with like a few dozens or maybe a few hundred bucks that I have as a saving that I was ready to put inside the ecosystem. So we have to think about the people and build actual product for everyone even if your net worth is a few hundred dollars or even less than that. And that was the first thing that, uh, that push all the focus at some point on Aave to find a solution to provide back the Aave services to everyone. And uh, the best solution for that was uh, Polygon because it was a sidechain. It was already ready with already an ecosystem like QuickSwap, uh, already a friendly application close to us like Avegachi that were already deployed uh, with success on Polygon, uh, already some liquidity. EVM based, so the same technology than Ethereum, EV, uh, Ethereum friendly. And that's also the second topic. Why, for example, Polygon and not BS? Well, the second thing, uh, we don't want to build for the rich. And it doesn't make sense also to build something that is called decentralized finance, is everything belongs to one entity. It doesn't make sense at all. And is if as a project, you are ready to sacrifice decentralization just for growth, because that was the easy part, because back in the day, that network was very big. And if you deploy there, you sure you will get um, many users. And is, if as a project, you're ready to sacrifice decentralization just for growth, you don't deserve both of them. You, you deserve nothing of that. So uh, we took another part with a network that is more decentralized, that is more friendly to the Ethereum ecosystem. And that bet was a success because uh, not only Aave, but a lot of very good uh, application and a great ecosystem was built on Polygon. And I'm very happy that we took that path. So it's a very interesting insight uh, hearing from you guys at Aave. I mean, you guys already have uh, Ethereum uh, L1 successful going along and then how you guys decide the next change to support. Um, I definitely agree with your point of view, Samip and Mark, about how um, during the DeFi summer or maybe earlier this year when, when Ethereum price went up and gas fees went up, like, I mean, making a swap on Uniswap became like like $50 at the very least. It doesn't make any sense. Like, it only makes sense to use Ethereum when you have a five-figure portfolio and nobody has five-figure, no beginner is going to put a five-figure portfolio into, into ETH in day one. So, so yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Um, I think, I think Mark, you brought up some interesting points about how uh, BSC is very decentralized, um, very centralized uh, with just Binance and all the validators are pretty much Binance controlled. Um, and I think this would be an interesting question to segue into for Arjun. Right? So there was uh, some arguments on Twitter uh, maybe a few weeks ago about how Matic's also um, not very decentralized. A lot of the validators on, Mat on Polygon is actually... Uh, controlled by the, the Matic team or, or, or Matic. So maybe maybe this, so, so let's talk about the, the how polygons, is it really decentralized as uh, what you oh, guys claim or sure, like how true is this? And and yeah, what sort of centralization is there on, on polygon? Yeah. So in fact, I'll just put down, um, you know, a link in, in, in the crowdcast so that, you know, um, the public can take a look at that. Um, but essentially, you know, I would say we are probably hands down the most decentralized um, uh, scalability solution and possibly more decentralized than some layer one solutions as well. We have about a hundred validators. I've just shared the list on Crowdcast as well. And, you know, everybody should take a look at that. Um, yes, we do have some foundation nodes which are run by Polygon. I think there are six of them now. And we have, you know, in a phased phase manner, we've been sort of retiring those nodes as well so that we will make the uh, sort of the entire validator network completely decentralized. Also now to choose new validators, uh, there will be an auction mechanism. So what that means is the validator committee, that is all the validators essentially decide who the new validators are going to be. 
and and it's it's a more decentralized more community focused approach uh, towards expanding you know the ecosystem and and making it more decentralized so so that's kind of uh, so so I, and i think this is such an important part which mark brought up as well you know that that if you want to build something large and scalable if you want to build a you know big ecosystem you got to do it the right way right and when you want to do it um, and also be decentralized at the same time it's it's tough like it's really hard to do that not just from a community perspective but also from a technology perspective to you know to build all of that to make sure it works seamlessly and we've had our hiccups as well you know as as more and more transactions are happening we're roughly doing almost upwards of 7 million transactions now on a daily basis uh, so it's it's a lot of hard work for the team but but i also believe in what you know both mark and so we talked about that you have to be extremely decentralized and you have to build a technology which is useful for the common man like if you're pricing out the average user then you might as well go back to the to the centralized finance world that that's essentially what's happening there if you want to do a decentralized manner then the power has to go to the individuals and the people in the community and and it has to be something which you know which can build that segway to mass adoption like you know this this um this discussion which happens like every quarter right like you know mass adoption for blockchain getting the next million users into blockchain like the only way to do that is to build build like the way you know we are trying to build and and it's tough but but that's the right approach and and that's the way we want to do it um and now coming back to what you talked about decentralization you know we are possibly like i said you know very decentralized and encourage you know the community to look into that as well and i've shared the list of validators as well so many of them are professional validator companies some of them are uh, enterprise companies like like infosys which is a big id services giant 40 billion dollar company uh, and some of them are big b apps right which have large number of users and they feel that they want to be you know run a validator So, so we have a mix of validators, and and it's you know spread across the globe. Very interesting, and you know I'd, I'd love for the community to look and you know give us their feedback as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, and and there was also discussion about how Polygon being a side chain and it's not really a layer two uh, yeah. solution. Do you want to chip into that discussion or? Right. So, so this it, is like a it makes no sense. It makes no sense. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to to be in, but uh, as an ecosystem actor, uh, technically it can be right. But I think 99% of people listening to us doesn't care right now. And yep. at some point, if we want to be inclusive, if we want to have more people using the technology and the services, we have to stop those empty debates. Of course, we can have like technical discussion on our side, and that's super interesting. But the first thing is to provide services that works now. not the perfect like the perfect solution doesn't exist today but we are all working to contribute to build that perfect solution together and right now we have something it works who cares if it's called layer 2 side chain or cold chain who cares and who cares about the difference if you care about the difference that mean you are involved enough in the ecosystem to understand there's a difference but for 99% of the people i don't know and no, and, and it's all right good point. as long as it works yeah No, yeah, I think no, as long as it's decentralized and it's like uh, cheap enough for the users to use it, it's easy enough for the users to use it. I think that that's what yeah. those are key criteria, right? I yeah. 100% agree with Mark there, right? Ultimately, the technology has to be usable, right? And and the way I I look about look at it is that ultimately, whatever terminology you want to use, whether layer one, layer two, ultimately the the problem you're trying to solve through through layer even you know terminology of layer two is scalability. Like that's the problem you're trying to solve. Mm-hmm. and and whenever you solve any problem like this right so the way to visualize it like let's say for the average user would be it's like an airport right so in airport in an airport for example if you have extremely heavy and tight security you know you can have the best security in the world with like seven different nine different checks but you won't be able to put people onto the airplane right so there won't be enough throughput similarly mm-hmm. if you have very lax security then bad actors will be get on to be get on to the airplane so just like airport security right you have to have just the right amount of security which gives you you know sort of a probabilistically the minimum um the minimum the you know sort of almost a minuscule chance or almost an improbable chance of something going wrong and and thereby you preserve both throughput and security right and our way of solving for security was essentially you know committing transactions to ethereum on a regular basis like that that of course you know apart from the fact that we are decentralized and you know two thirds of the validators data is to sign up on transactions but even the checkpoint which is submitted on to ethereum like two thirds of the validators have to sign up on the checkpoint as well and even after the checkpoint is submitted on ethereum like anybody can challenge the checkpoint and if if somebody challenges the checkpoint and it's found to be erroneous then the two thirds of the validators signed off on it will lose their entire stake So there's a heavy penalty. Like we have almost over a billion dollars now staked on our network. That's like a six hundred, seven hundred billion dollar loss, 
for for you know the state for the stakers. So so there's a very heavy downside for working against the network. So this is how we've controlled for security and we've created a situation where every angle is covered. Mm-hmm. And and just like how Mark was saying, right? You you have to solve the problem. The focus cannot be on terminology. It has to be on problem solving. And we found a you know way which solves for security and throughput and it works. So that's that's kind of how we we look at that. And that's why we call ourselves like a commit chain. And it's basically to <laughs> avoid the flame wars which happen here. The moment you say mm-hmm. L2 on Twitter, everybody's like throwing lava on each other. So we just said, okay, we're a commit chain and commit yeah, chain. That's, that's what we are, you know. So yeah. so no no more lava, please. Like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of like talks, a lot of like people, teams working on L2 solutions, right? So you have Arbitrum, Optimism. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, they're all planning to, to launch soon, mm-hmm. I suppose. And, and Unisoft's kind of you know, Arbitrum and then Optimism. Yes, I mean, yes. I'm just curious to hear from your thoughts, even from, from RV and Quicksop. Uh, what do you guys think about mm-hmm. the other layer to change? Are you guys planning to also, you know, port over to these other layer to solutions? Or, and, and do you think that, when this Arbitrum and Optimism launch, do you think it will sort of take market share away from Polygon? I mean, I mean, we start seeing people in, in crypto kind of, it's, it's very fleeting. It's, it goes from Ethereum to BSC, now to Polygon. Do you think we'll go to, I just want to hear your thoughts from you guys. Well, the first thing is that we are working on a decentralized technology. Like the, the whole point of the blockchain technology is to be decentralized. So to me, it makes zero sense, like zero, that everything in the future will be centralized in one blockchain. Like, why? Like, the, the whole point is to be decentralized. So obviously, there's going to be multiple layers, multiple solutions that are going to work at the same time. Because uh, Polygon is a great technology, but it cannot handle right now, like at this moment, uh, tens of millions or hundreds of millions of users. Because I know uh, all the networks, it can handle like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands uh, of transactions, but probably not hundreds of millions of transactions and users. And that's a fact. And that's that's okay because that's going to be multiple solutions at the same time. You're going to have like the charging, uh, the add 2.0 that's going to happen probably next year. You're going to have the rollups on Arbitrum, on Optimism. You're going to have a ZK uh, solution. All these uh, solutions will work on parallel because what we have right now is a, an incredible community, an incredible ecosystem, but it's so small compared to what can be in the future. Like right now, we have hundreds of thousands of users. Tomorrow, we will have hundreds of millions or even billions of users. So there's going to be multiple layers, multiple technology, and the world pie will just grow. And who cares how much part of the pie you have? Exactly, exactly. So I tend to agree with Mark on this point, right? So yeah, so I completely agree that decentralization doesn't mean decentralization of you know, applications built on top chain, on, not on top of blockchain as well. It means the decentralization of the entire ecosystems, which which in itself is a combination of different blockchains, different solutions out there, right? And we need to figure out a way where we can work interoperably with, with all those solutions, right? So I think that should be the next step of, you know, uh, it's a de- development on these applications where, you know, different applications can interact with each other, you know, uh, like Cookswap can be on, Polygon and there is Uniswap on Arbitrum and some other applications on BSC. We need to build solutions where we can interact with each other and we can tap into the liquidity of each other's platform. I think that's truly, we are still far away from that particular thing, in my honest opinion. But I think that's something which we are looking forward to, right? Because <clears throat> honestly speaking, I, I personally don't think that right now any single blockchain, how scalable it is, it's not ready to, you know, to handle the load of the entire planet. Like right? suppose if you want to you know, move the entire traditional finance onto decentralized finance. I don't think we'll be able to handle that particular load. So we need to share the load, right? So I think Arbitrum and all these technologies, they'll share the load. And I'm not, and I, I personally don't think that if Arbitrum will come on, like they, they'll come on to play. And if Uniswap is there, if uh, like other protocols are there, I'm like, I'm, I'm 100% sure that, the, you know, the liquidity or the applications on Polygon are not going to go away, right? Because if, though, if they go to, or uh, like if everything goes to Arbitrum, they will not be able to handle that. And, and we same. already have proof of that. Like when yeah. Aave launched on Polygon, there were like $7 billion into the Aave market on Ethereum. Right. Six weeks later, like seven weeks later right now, there's $8 billion on Polygon and $10 billion and even more than that, than $10 billion on Ethereum. The war, it's not a zero sum game. And it's growing the size of the pie for everyone. It's growing the ecosystem right. and providing more options to everyone. Exactly, exactly. I mean, like, as more solutions are coming up, 
it's not actually a competition i like i would say they are bringing a lot of more other lot of users to the blockchain terminology right so if arbitrum comes right they are definitely going to bring next 1 million users who know nothing about blockchain right and when they get to start about know about blockchain they not only use arbitrum they use polygon as well they use bsc as well they use ethereum as well so i think you know all these technology all these solutions are good for the entire ecosystem they are not bad so no, that's true and and you know i 100% agree with what what samib and mark are saying and, and that's the reason that is the thought process behind polygon as well like we ourselves are building polygon to be a multi chain environment then if you go to our website and see our development plans and what the road map which we have we are also researching optimistic roll up technology we also uh, uh, you know researching zk roll ups you know the ability to spawn your own chain and and possibly even some new kind of scaling solution which might come in the future as well so we also recognize that the future will be multi chain uh, there will not be just this one infrastructure which can just like our mark said you know entire the handle the entire planet sort of transactions that 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 would not that is not the future it will be multi chain and 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 this is so interesting even for me right like as a discussion when i have this in forums that everybody assumes that all the different uh, layer like sort of scalability solutions like arbitrum starkware and polygon have their knives out for each other <laughs> and you know sort of but that's actually not true like you know while all of us may differ in our approach to scalability all of us are actually united by the problem we're trying to solve we're mm-hmm. all trying to solve the same problem uh, which is how do you create you know a kind of infrastructure which can get millions of users into blockchain which can give them that confidence which is fast and expensive just like what they use in cent- in the centralized world right like when you use like netflix uber or anything on your phone it should be like that and everybody is trying to build the same thing and of course you know you know it's a technical problem people tend to have different approaches which is fine but it is this kind of research and and it is this kind of movement which will take the entire blockchain ecosystem forward and that is the most important thing that is the goal which all of us are fighting for so so the future will be multi chain we have also baked that into our roadmap and and you know we've we've been talking to the arbitrum team to the stock party for many months now and and i think they built some interesting you know awesome stuff as well and i'd love to see you know them go live and you know how you know how, and how the ecosystem then evolves with the you know with the different solutions yeah so i i have a thing to add over here i think we should look into it from a different perspective so even if you talk about a traditional finance like traditional finance is not completely dominated by one single player it, like mm-hmm. there are multiple players working in traditional finance and let's just assume everyone goes away and there is only one player traditional finance will, will not work why traditional finance is so good because there are multiple players and they interact seamlessly with each other i think that's the future of decentralized finance as well and blockchain as well right so we need solutions yeah. where we can interoperate and inter- interact with each other yeah i think one of the things that we, we we're not sure is how, how will the future of blockchain technology be right will it be kind of like the tech world where it's a winner take all zero sum game where you only have like one large search engine one large social media network google facebook one large uh, e-commerce store amazon or it kind of be like like what you said some like in the traditional finance world where they are kind of multiple large banks kind of and kind of decentralized in that sense i'd say i mean auto i mean he has his own flaws but but it's not a winner take all market so i mean i, I think your perspectives that you guys shared on how uh, the other the multi chain world and how each of them will kind of complement each other is an interesting interesting perspective i mean it will be hundreds of millions billions of people that we have to serve and and all these chains we need to survive and 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 serve this market together to kind of make it grow together so yeah uh very very interesting perspective that you guys shared next question that i have actually is for if for for arjun right um um one ways people on board onto polygon is mainly why the if on bridge uh, and centralized exchanges so at this point in time i know we know that okx and and ascent ascent snx uh Ascend, Ascendex, Bitmax, previous known as Bitmax, uh, support this Polygon chain uh, uh, withdrawals and deposit. Uh, and then there was a third party um, solutions like X, Polyne, and Zapper. And also, you guys run a bridge yourself. Right? So, are there any other easy ways for users to move from ETH to Matic and then from BSC to Matic or like some other, you know, this multi chain bridges around, around to, 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 to Polygon, basically? very interesting point i get this question like this is like possibly the top rank question which <laughs> which i get you know these days like how do we how do we get around to polygon so there are multiple ways so so uh, you've already talked about a few of them right so one part is going from eth so for that we have our own solution um, which is you know we built a bridge uh, which is uh, wallet.matic.network which um, you know which in fact let me put that link down there in the uh, crop 
in in, in the crowdcast link and and you know that's something which which you know which we've built which helps you go from eth there are bridges like connect which are trying to bridge many different evm chains which which basically is the underlying technology of x pollinate um and uh, and at the same time several centralized exchanges right so the centralized exchange part for me is like very interesting there i posted a list on crowdcast and and many more exchanges are integrating with us and and this is very interesting because this allows people to enter and exit a centralized exchange with very low fees so thereby increasing volumes are actually both the sides where users can come and go and and do those kind of things um at the same time all the accounts on most centralized exchanges are all kyc accounts so it solves like um how do you say regulatory problem as well um so i think i think this is is a very interesting way for us to scale the number of users who can use our chain um of course you know on the bridges uh, side you have for, so for example if i were to talk about evm chains x pollinate is one we have a few bridges with with uh, with bse as well like there's a evo defi bridge there's an orbit chain bridge any swap also runs a bridge few other ones are there from ethereum as well i think the biconomy team is also working on some interesting bridging technology so there are many different bridges which are um, coming into play and and i feel that this is a very interesting uh, development for the ecosystem as a whole right because when we talked about you know how many different chains are going to exist at the same time with with maybe varying levels of traffic you know having these bridges in place uh, which can you know first of all move liquidity fast but also in a very decentralized you know bridges which are also very decentralized i think are going to be a very core part of the tooling of what this multi chain future looks like so so more and more bridges uh, you know companies who are building bridges are getting in touch with us and uh, if there are some out there you know please feel free to ping me and reach out to me as well so i think we're going to see an acceleration in this space um and uh, and you know and of course you know if you follow us on twitter we have like you know we keep sharing the updates of of whom we are integrated with next but but a lot, lot of interesting movement in this bridging space mm-hmm. i must say yeah Yeah, I remember talking to um, OKX actually a few mm-hmm. couple of months ago. They were asking me like, what project should we kind of lease or integrate with on on OKX? Wanted like the hot projects, right? To to they said, do you know what, guys? If there's one thing that I would do if I'm if I run OKX, integrate and have a bridge with Polygon because that will be the <laughs> the, the the trend, right? That will be what's going to happen. And, and true enough, right? They, they saw that as well. They kind of debated internally and, and, and they implemented the bridge. So I'm very glad that they took my advice into consideration. And so that was that's quite, really that was quite fun. Thanks, yeah. Bobby. Like all the all the credit goes to Bobby. No, okay, but it actually does. So, so thank you so much. And it's when the community members speak for us is when magic and magical things happen. So thank you so much for that. Yeah. yeah. I, I, let's let's jump a little bit into NFTs, right? I mean, uh, I think this is something that that Mark has a lot of uh, interesting experience as well. So you guys run uh, Avigochi, um, um, and also might be interesting to hear from from you guys, Sami and Arjun as well. Like, what what is, what do you think about NFT on Polygon? Do you think it makes sense, or do you think like NFTs should be on a strong, secure layer one, like Ethereum? Are there any NFT projects on Polygon and? Maybe, maybe, or do you, do you see any trends in NFTs as well in general? Uh, on the Ave side, I just want to say that uh, Ave Gachi is a very friendly and close project to Ave, but it's an independent, independent team. So it's their own team. Uh, we love them, and I'm a big user, uh, and I, <laughs> I have quite a few Gachis, and I'm a big fan of NFT games. Like I play to Comet, I play to um, Axie Infinity, uh, like so, so many good games out there. And I really believe like NFT is like a big step. Obviously, we got like some crazy thing that happened over the past few months. Uh, like every uh, like crazy uh, uh, growing market, you have like a few outliers uh, with like big sales. But I think the technology is here to 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 stay. I think the use case is real, and uh, the, there's a, a lot of opportunities there. Uh, Ave is working on NFT project. Uh, it, it has been disclosed on Twitter like a few uh, weeks ago, and that's going to be a big one. And uh, yeah, that's uh, one of the uh, area of focus for us. And uh, it makes a lot of sense to do NFTs on a Polygon because of the transaction fees. Because like one of the way. Uh, One of the main use case and one of the use case of NFT is to empower the artist. And if you ask the artist to spend like sixty dollars or eighty dollars just to mint their art and their NFTs, and then uh, ask people that want to buy the, that art piece like twenty dollars just for bid, not not even minting the NFT, but just to bid uh, to buy it, and then maybe eighty dollars to mint it, 
it doesn't make sense at all. And most artists are price out, and then you, you get only the big names. And as we don't like DeFi to be financed only for the rich, we don't want NFT to be out only for the rich and the famous. And uh, it should be for everyone. And uh, Polygon allows that and uh, allows to enforce that as well. Yeah, yeah. So I tend to agree with Mark. I think, you know, if it doesn't make sense for the NFT to be on Polygon, I'm not sure where does it make sense. So let's, I mean, like, I would like to explain this as an example. Let's let's assume there's a ticketing system which is generating NFT, right? So if we are not using Polygon to generate NFT, the gas cost would be somewhere around 20 US dollars, right? And then when I'm selling that particular tickets, the gas cost, I'm just talking about the gas cost, not the ticket cost here. The gas cost for selling those tickets would be another $20, $15, depending on the gas price. And now as a user, when I want to redeem that ticket, and suppose it's a QR, uh, scan, like QR code based system and I want to redeem it, it's another $20, right? And apart from this $20, there is a waiting time as well, right? So if I'm not going to pick up the highest gas price, I might have to wait for minutes, might be two minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, two hour, right? So I, I think, you know, it perfectly makes sense to have these applications, you know, all the NFT applications on Polygon network, because now you we don't have to worry about, again, the gas prices, again, the transaction times, like anything. So you can do it seamlessly. You can do, you know, uh, with just the click of your mouse. So as soon as I click, it's redeemed, right? I don't have to wait for it to, to get redeemed to pet confirm the blockchain. So in my like personal opinion, it perfectly makes sense for all the app, NFT applications to use, you know, Polygon. Perfectly makes sense for me. No, definitely. And, 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 and as luck would have it, it makes sense to me too. No, no, I'm just kidding. No, but definitely it's, it's, uh, I would say so. So, so there's some couple of interesting things you talked about, right? Like how you need to put this technology in the hands of the common man and, 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 and this is how you do it. You have to make it as intuitive to use and as easy to use as as possibly um, any other uh, kind of um, you know kind of web2 technology now what and and this is what even the open sea teams saw right so when we started talking to open sea you know we kind of uh, realized that uh, uh, that, that, that you know the problem we were talking about was very interesting that even on many of these sites like for example which list nfts you know the those nfts which we read about which sell for um, hundreds of of, of, of thousands of dollars are actually contrib- are actually less than maybe 0.5 percent of the NFTs in the market. Like the 99 percent of the NFTs, I would say, are between that zero to maybe 500 dollar range, right? And and if you have to sell those NFTs and be able to make a profit, then you need to have a network which has those kind of network economics. Like on a, on a network like Polygon, you could sell a one dollar NFT profitably, right? You could sell a 50 cent NFT profitably, and and when you do that, right, that is where mass adoption of NFT comes. That's where it stops becoming this multi-million dollar NFT got bought and a hundred thousand dollar NFT got bought. It, it comes, the technology sort of percolates down into interesting use cases like tickets, for example. So if you have tickets, let's say for a for a rock show or for a sporting event, you know, a hundred thousand tickets have to be sold. Like you cannot do that if every ticket costs like five hundred or two hundred dollars or something like that. You've got to be able to sell that five dollar ticket. And that's what we've realized. Like and a lot of teams are doing this, even for virtual events, you can just generate NFTs. Um, and you need to give those to users. You can generate like seasons passes as NFTs, and as, as long as that's in your wallet, then you can have access to shows. You can do interesting things, like you can do what uh, teams like, let's say, Charge Particles are doing, right? We have an NFT, mm-hmm. which is an ERC-1155, and you can put ERC-20 tokens inside that NFT. And, and, and those tokens are bearing yield, right? So now this NFT actually represents an investment contract, right? It's something like that. Every NFT has a yield, and you can put tokens inside it. So all of these interesting things are only possible when those network economics make sense. And, and this is kind of what I'm seeing now on the Polygon network. And you know, with people now, now that you've taken cost out of the equation, there is this rampant innovation of how N- NFTs can be used, you know, both with DeFi, outside of DeFi, uh, combining ERC-1155 NFTs into one NFT, and then you know, that sort of a stake to get some ERC-20 token, which can be staked to get some NFT, which can be staked to get another NFT or something like that. Like, some very, very, like every time like I talk to some NFT project, there's some new concept, you know, which completely is, is super exciting. So I, I think this for me is, is like the most like, you know, I think the best thing is, is that it's the taking cost out of the equation has spurred this new, you know, innovation in, in what is possible and what is not possible with NFTs, you know, and, and that for me is, is the biggest way. Um, that now new things are possible and that new business, you know, businesses will be set up and that new ways of thinking will, will come from this. And, and it will bring utility to many NFTs, you know, which otherwise, you know, outside of just 
selling for large dollar value you know you have to ask like where's the utility now you can bring that utility so for me like this is like the most important thing just the innovation which which this is yeah. this is caused yeah yeah i agree, definitely agree i think i think the, the nft is is just a is just a a, a token framework and a token model and and that you can represent so many different things that we start we see we sort of started doing uh uh lp tokens as nfts with such thing like like Samit, you mentioned uh ticketing systems nft so tickets can be represented as nfts and when it's cheap you can do a lot of this i mean imagine every conference each t tickets that would be interesting and you can kind of resell them or, or and what the with the, with the conference you the nft has some value which becomes a collector for example that that's a lot of interesting things that can come out with it so yeah um definitely are there are there any nft projects on polygon already at this point in time uh or um are we got is on on on, right. on no, polygon so we right, have, i believe there are a huge number of nft projects I, i would encourage you to check out um that website which i have uh, posted it's it's a community run page but it's called uh, awesomepolygon.com where awesome you can see the total polygon. list of projects yeah awesomepolygon.com and you can check out all the different nft projects which are there live on on polygon so there's like a pretty huge list um nice. and yeah and and uh, you know that encourage you to check them out encourage the community to check them out and give us more feedback on you know <laughs> on what kind of projects we should have so so yeah um let's let's jump in some of few uh, questions right i have this question for samip actually so um, you guys were first on on polygon you guys built the first dex and polygon you guys because you're the first mover uh you guys had the first mover on chain had a lot of uh, users a lot of uh, com- uh affinity from with the community but recently we started seeing um other dex building on top of uh polygon so what a biggest example would be so she stopped expanding onto polygon and you start seeing like uh slingshot coming in as well uh, i'm just curious to hear from you guys um are you guys worried about sushi swap and how do you guys think about competition how do you guys think about differentiating yourself from from sushi swap and, and all the other dexes that may come onto polygon later on so as i said before as well right so they are not competitors right so it's necessary to build an entire ecosystem so let's just assume there is just quick swap one polygon as a dex right so we cannot grow as an ecosystem because you only have quick swap it's it's like having just bank just one bank right running everything so i like i'm personally happy that sushi swap ave and like other protocols curve they are coming to polygon because they are giving us the actual exposure right and that's what we needed so if you look into our stats like i'm i'm going to share this page as well to the community and uh, so after ave came on board after sushi came on board after curve came on board we are not seeing any decline in our liquidity uh, actually there has been a sudden growth in our volumes sudden growth in our total value log value of our token has increased so this just validates our assumption like which we were talking about that you know we need we need some kind of interoperability we need more exchanges we need more you know more decentralization and decentralization is not just about you know developing a contract on a blockchain no that's not decentralization decentralization is basically when there are multiple players working on same thing that's what actually the growth of ecosystem comes from right so i am not worried about you know sushi swap at all because we are not going to go away right so when they come on board when they are when they came on polygon they brought a lot of users to us they brought a lot of users to polygon right and when they come to polygon they use quick swap as well right they are not just going to use sushi swap they are just So when Aave bought users, Aave users are not just going to Aave, going to use entire set of applications which are there on Polygon, right? Because the gas fee fees is so low, the action, you know, the times are so small that like it's it's addictive, I would say, right? It's addictive. Right? So not at all worried about Quick Swap, not at all worried about all like other dexes that come which are coming on Polygon. I like in my personal opinion, they should actually come to Polygon, and I'll be more than happy if they come to Polygon. So one of the very interesting thing with alternative market makers like QuickSwap or SushiSwap is that actually when you only have one, you have a set amount of volume and users. But when you actually have two or more than that, by the design of the bottom curve of automatic market makers, you have arbitrage opportunities. So you have increased volume that happen. And uh, Actually, the more automatic market maker you have on the chain, the better it is in terms of volume of liquidity and users, because you will have these opportunities that pops between the different um, market makers, and that also means that when you are a liquidity provider, because there's more volume, you earn more. 
And so it's not a zero sum game. I really believe like the difference between CFI and DeFi is that when you enter DeFi, you have to completely drop and leave behind you this winner take all mindset that this mindset that is a zero sum game and enter in the new mindset that is defined by something very simple that we say on Twitter all, all the time. We all gonna make it. Yeah, we all yeah. gonna make it. <laughs> Definitely, very, you know, very well put. Uh, I must say, like you know, this is, this is the more more dexes there, are, the more options people have, the more arbitrage can happen. You know, it opens up new opportunities. So, so that's you know that that's what what even as an ecosystem we aim for, right? To have uh, as many players as we can, so that all all the different you know users can try out all of these different apps. Um, so, so yeah, so I think that's uh, that's that's exactly what we are aiming for as well to have as many options as we can for the average user. I think it's more important for us to see them, see other similar applications as competitors. Actually, we should, you know, see them as a supporter because we are here to build an ecosystem, right? So, I, and I think it's very necessary that all those applications come onto the platform. Otherwise, you know, the ecosystem is not there. QuickSwap is there, but it's not an ecosystem, right? And we want to build an ecosystem. So, if QuickSwap is all is is uh, is available only on the Polygon, right? It's the only Dex. Like I'm pretty sure it's not going to work because, like as Mark said, there are less opportunities, right? Less arbitrage opportunities. Who's going to balance the imbalance in the prices, which is there on a dex, right? Because there are no price oracles which work on AMMs, right? It's the arbitragers, and for arbitragers, we need different multiple exchanges out there. So I think it's a good opportunity that all these players are coming on. Yeah, interesting point that that Mark brought up. So like the more dexes come out, the more. Uh... Uh, arbitrage happens and there's more liquidity fees to go to the liquidity providers and all. So yeah, interesting point of view. And I'm I, I, curious to hear from your point of view as well, right? I mean, do you see users coming on, new users coming and using Polygon first or do they still come to Ethereum and then kind of bridge over to Polygon? Like a, a large user base uh, different from Ethereum or the new users onto Polygon? First time blockchain users coming onto Polygon directly? Or are they mostly users from other other chains? Um, no, I think in terms of uh, data on our mm -hmm. side, like uh, when we look at the actual on-chain data on the Aave protocol, there's no more user on the Polygon blockchain than on the Ethereum blockchain in terms of number of active address, and there's very little overlap between the active address on Polygon using Aave and the active address using it, uh, Aave on Ethereum. There's some overlap, so some people migrated and took the opportunity, but actually many, many people started their blockchain journey with Polygon. And that's super interesting to see. Definitely. And, and you know, that, that, that for me as well, right, is, is basically that's the goal for, for, for me as well, um, you know, and for the Polygon ecosystem is to you know, put put our ecosystem because it's easy to use and and it's accessible to everybody regardless of, of you know how much money you have or you know how how technically competent you are like it should be that easy and intuitive. We are able. I want to position this to as many users as possible and and for me I feel that you know like I said that Polygon provides this kind of environment where a new user can come and experience blockchain right and not have to pay an arm and a leg like it's a forgiving environment where you can make mistakes. Right, where you can do wrong transactions and not, you know, lot of hold your head after that. Like, oh crap! Like, you know, I made a mistake. Like, it doesn't matter. And that is so important for any first-time user. Like, you know, you have to make it like that. So, so, so that's why I, you know, and and I want to bring like Polygon in front of as many non-blockchain users as possible. I introduce you to as many friends of mine as possible as well. But why don't you just try it out? Just, just try it and then see what it's like and gain that confidence that okay, this 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 technology is worth something. It means something. And and you know and that's when you're gonna get the converts and that's I think it's gonna benefit everybody. So so yeah, I, I think Samir was saying something else. Yeah yeah. So like I I think I was about to say what you just said, right? So I think it perfectly makes sense, you know, that a lot of new addresses are are being generated on Polygon because if I'm a new user, I think for me personally it makes more sense to come on to Polygon first and try it out what blockchain technology is, what a lending plot platform Aave is, what AR automated market makers are. What quick swap is, what sushi swap is, play around them, and when I'm like you know uh, good with it, then maybe I can go to layer one solution and use applications over there. But as a first time user, if if I have to do it, I'll start with Pol if I'll start my journey with Polygon because it costs pennies to do transactions over there to try stuff. 
Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, if I if I'm a new blockchain user today and I were to come in and go to Ethereum and I don't maybe now it's fine, but I mean one one or two months ago and pay fifty dollars for a swap, there's no way I'll use Ethereum. So <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. But 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 now um yeah, it definitely makes sense to kind of start learning making. I mean. When we, when we, all of us, when we started using Ethereum back then, I mean, gas were cheap. It was, it cost pennies to use the Ethereum network. It was not congested. It was so cheap. I mean, so you're like, yeah, just spend, make mistakes, learn, pay the tuition fee. But, but now it's just, it's just, we kind of graduated to, 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 to know, to, to be able to afford the, 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 the gas fees. But for many people, it's just a polygon. Maybe last question for you guys before we kind of wrap this up uh, in the last nine minutes or so. Um, what do you think will it be like for, the crypto ecosystem, the Polygon ecosystem. Uh, in the second half of 2021, where do you see the Polygon ecosystem move on? Um, and, and how do you see the next half a year? And then, yeah, it will be interesting to hear your thoughts on, on that. Oh, sure. So uh, I'll just quickly cover some some parts of it. And and uh, so there are two parts, right, to the Polygon story in, in, in the second half of this year, right? So one is on the technology aspect. And then second is, you know, what we're going to be doing on the ecosystem aspect. So on the technology aspect, like I said, you know, we've come out with our new technology, the Polygon SDK, which allows you to, you know, create your own sort of chains, spawn your own kind of chains. We are continuing to improve on that technology and, and make it and you know making it better, easier to use. We're also looking at roll-up chains and you know, we'll have some exciting announcements around that as well. And and I think there's also an interesting thing which we're working on, which is what we feel like there is this problem uh, called the data availability problem which we feel is like a very core problem which you have to solve if you have to make like a concept like rollups um, scalable um, and, and possibly more decentralized. So, so we're going to be talking about that problem and our solution to that as well. So that's like being more on the technical side. Um, on the ecosystem side, you know, we've got a lot of exciting things happening uh, on the DeFi side. Um, you know, there are a lot of, lot of cool things going to, ha- uh, you know, they're going to be there uh, even in the NFT gaming space. Um, I think there's going to be huge, huge explosion in gaming as well uh, as more and more, you know, games realize that they can leverage, you know, NFT mechanics and, and blockchain mechanics, you know, to add new value to their existing portfolios. So a lot of Web2 games uh, are looking at, you know, how they can use blockchain. It's a lot of explosion in that, a lot of interesting DeFi. Um, I know the Aave team also, you know, made an interesting announcement about NFT. So, so you know, there's going to be all of these interesting things. So I'd love to also hear you know, more about what Mark and Samip have planned for the next few months. Yeah, of course. Why not? So I think, you know, uh, in this first phase, what we have seen, we have seen, you know, biggest players coming from layer one to layer two, right? Like Aave came, Curve came, Sushi Swap came, QuickSwap became quite big, right? I, I think in next, in uh, what, what will happen in the next phase is, you know, uh, I think, I personally think that's what we need as well. Now we need, you know, all the toolings which are out there on layer one solution to come to Polygon. I'm talking about, let's say, Def- DeFi Pulse, talking about DeFi Prime. I'm talking about Dune Analytics, right? I'm talking about, uh, let's say, what else? Uh, maybe Alchemy, right? So I think in next phase, we'll see all these applications, all these services, which are built on top of DeFi. So the first step, first step was to bring DeFi, right? So we have already brought a good chunk of DeFi. People know a lot about Polygon, a lot about DeFi on Polygon, right? Now the next step is bringing all these tools and services which are built on top of DeFi to come to Polygon. Because I think in the next step, we need to improve the user experience on Polygon, especially for the DeFi users. And when all these applications are out there, when the all the node block providers are out there, this will improve the user experience massively. And I think that's what's going to happen in phase two. And even at QuickSwap, we are working on improving user experience. Right? That's our topmost priority at this at this particular moment. Right? So we are doing a redesigning. We are working with a lot of wallet providers. I think that's what player, like phase two is. We need to bring a lot of wallets as well, right? And I think that's what is going to happen as well. So uh-huh. I think phase phase two will be for tools and services uh, which are built on top of DeFi to improve the UX. Nice. Mark, do you want to add on to it to that? Any, anything on second half of the year? Um, well, uh, there's so many things that, that would happen uh, before <laughs> the end of the year. Uh, one of the first uh, important things is that uh, on the Ave side will be uh, what we call the Ave Pro Market. So uh, we gave like some heavy hints on Twitter already uh, on social media that there's going to be uh, a dedicated liquidity and some dedicated liquidity uh, environment for institutions. Uh, it's going to be a big one, uh, and we are 
very close to uh, the release of that and i will stop giving information to it no but you will see very trying soon. to take the alpha from you right let's see what <laughs> <laughs> yeah but <laughs> you will see it's very close so that's the first thing the second thing is nfts so there, there's a like a, a project on Aave to use nft as collateral uh, and uh, that's very interesting as well uh, and also a scalability solution. So Polygon, uh, it's what I call back in the day, uh, exploring the new frontiers we, with the community. And uh, Polygon was the first frontier. And I think we all love the journey here. And this journey is uh, going to stay on Polygon for the long term uh, because uh, all the synergy that we found there. But we're also going to explore new solutions like uh, the Arbitrum solution and uh, other rollups. Uh, zero knowledge proof also is on the radar, but that's not going to shock any, uh, anyone. And there's going to be more information about that uh, very soon. Yep. Because at the end of the day, it's not a we don't take situation. It's uh, growing the size of the pipe and growing the amount of opportunities for uh, all the users up there. Uh, and uh, that's part of it. And I really uh, all people will love it and uh, explore with us uh, on that part and also what will happen soon is that uh, ethereum will have an upgrade the aip 1559 that will happen this summer probably not ethereum 2.0 in 2021 nobody believe in that anymore because you know uh when the ethereum foundation give you a date just add two years to the date and yeah. maybe you have something accurate because at this point i don't believe uh, what they do but at least what when they do something it works so it's okay if it's uh, a bit late but don't believe them when they give deadlines but uh, EIP 1559 will be a game changer uh, to me because of the inflation model that's changed and the financial policy of Ethereum that changed completely. And uh, I think it's time for Ethereum and uh, Ethereum friendly ecosystem. And I count Polygon on that and the other solution on that to take back the spotlight because the 99% of what happened on the blockchain ecosystem where there's actual volume, actual user, it's inside the Ethereum ecosystem. So it's time we claim the spotlight because we deserve that. It's very, very interesting insight. Uh, thank you very much for sharing. And uh, Samip, uh, I, I like your, your point of view about having more infra providers onto Polygon. I think um, Ajun, you did, you guys at Polygon did the first important step of having Polygon scan on Polygon network. Uh, <laughs> now we have proper block explorer. <laughs> we proper, can track. <laughs> proper block explorer. No, definitely. And, and, it, and, and of course, you know, Samib's very right about that. We're also talking to Alchemy. So it should be, they should also be going live very soon. So that, that's a big focus for us. And also what Mark talked about, you know, like new user acquisition, right? You know, growing the pie. And getting more people into blockchain, like it's, it's a, personally for me, it's also it's like a big priority. That that's something I'm really passionate about. So mm -hmm. so a lot of exciting things are gonna happen. We're gonna figure out ways to do that. So yep. yeah, so stay tuned. Yeah, yeah, same same for Kuxab as well. So we we have a lot of things coming up. Like we are working on new versions as well. And mm -hmm. I think by the end of the year, we should have a lot of new things. So I'm not sure like what's going to happen after six months because six months is a long time, long yep. period for all of us, in, especially in DeFi. Right? Exactly. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, well, but the next. But in the next few months, you will definitely see a lot of interesting things coming up in Kutsa. Well, as what Mark says, in six months' time, we're all hopefully going to make it. And, and, and it will be a very interesting six months. So, yeah, I think, I think we will kind of run up on the one-hour point at this point uh, now. So I just want to say, like, thank you very much, Arjun, Samib, and Mark for taking the time to answer all my questions. Uh, thank you very much, everyone on Crowdcast. They are close to a 2,000 of you, 1,950 people on the Crowdcast listening. Uh, I think we probably hit a record on the largest meetup as well, uh, CoinGecko again. So thank you very much for all the questions, uh, all the, the chat that you have on the, on the, on the, on the, on the Crowdcast. And um, yeah, I will probably end here and hope to see you guys again when we host our next meetup next month. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks, you, Robbie. Thanks. Thank you for having us. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Meet Chris and Mark. They've both heard of Bitcoin and Ethereum. But while Chris is using eToro to trade top cryptocurrencies, Mark keeps getting cold feet. Chris uses eToro's simple and intuitive platform to build his own crypto portfolio. 
and Mark is still waiting for a sign. Chris follows and connects with other experienced traders on eToro. Mark is following the advice of Eugene, a friend who prefers to keep his money where he can see it. Chris uses eToro's copy trader to automatically replicate the portfolios of leading traders in real time, while Mark is still searching for answers. Do you feel like a Mark? Join eToro and gain the confidence you need to trade crypto. eToro. Sign up for free. For the latest crypto prices, visit our website. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date on the latest crypto trends.